Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. What's up, rock and rollers? Yep, your iPhone, your clock, your watch is correct. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redmond Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. We love these things. These are things that drive us, inspire us. I interview a lot of singers. There's some comedians, but hey, this is a drum show. I love talking to my drum brethren and sistren. It's a fraternity. It's a sorority. We love it. We lift each other up. This is a very exciting day because this young drummer has just been taking the world by storm hailing from mount washington kentucky since 2021 has been the touring drummer with the award-winning country rap kingpin jelly roll i'm talking about our friend cody ash what's up cody yo my dude it is so good so so good to be here man i i i could not be more grateful and blessed to 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 be asked to come on this show man you yeah. you you have you've been uh you know i ever you know a lot of a lot of drummers i'm sure you know it but like you know you you're an influence to a lot of drummers and and myself included and you know i've yeah this is this is awesome man i'm, I'm oh, glad man. that we've created our own friendship but like this is i'm i'm not the i'm not the guy that's gonna play cool bro like i'm i'm <laughs> i'm very 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 grateful yeah you you're 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 uh you're a legacy drummer man you're you're your name will live in infamy of of drummers, and it's just it's very cool oh. to to be here with you, man. Well, geez, and I'm, man, and I'm honored to consider you a friend. So this is awesome. Likewise, you, man, and congratulations so on all your success, brother. <laughs> thank you, man. It's um, it's 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 been awesome. It's it's a blessing, man. It's been a um, you know, it's it's been a grind for years and years and years, and a lot of tears and ass busting and fucking ass kissing and you know whatever you, you know but we're we're doing it you know you know ass you know exactly what i'm talking about though and you ass know kissing. So many, you know so many times there's this you're in a room and you just got to be quiet even though you don't want to be and you got to be nice to people that you don't want to be nice to sometimes and mm -hmm. It's a lot. Of, there's some ass kissing you got to do to to get to it, you know. But well, you know what? Uh, you're a you know you're just a likable guy. I remember last year we well. There's a story I think because we met each other at the Red Door, the infamous Red yeah. Door, where I have mixed infamous. business and pleasure for many many years. A couple <laughs> years back, and you were nice enough to introduce yourself. And you're like, I'm playing with this cat named Jelly Roll. I'm like, oh my god, that's so cool. And then a couple years later, this guy is like one of the biggest things on the planet. So mm. incredible. Um, but uh, when yeah, last year at the CMT Awards, I was playing yeah. this house band, and we got to like, you know, kick it a little bit, and we were on mm -hmm. the same Southwest flight. Almost like the entire music industry yeah. is on this flight back to Nashville. <laughs> yeah. God, I hope this oh, plane my... doesn't go down, right? Yo, uh, uh, Billy Gibb, or uh, was it Billy Gibbons? One of the yeah. ZZ Top guys. Yeah, Billy uh, Gibbons, yeah. Yeah, one of the ZZ Top guys was on um, was on that flight, too, and like Hardy, and like, you know, that, that was such an awesome flight, dude. That was a party. But you are, you're up that. and down the aisles. You're visiting with everyone. You're high-fiving people. You're kissing yeah. people. You're doing the thing. I'm like, this guy is going to, like, he has kicked the door open, and it's probably going to stay open for a very long time because you can play, man. I've seen you play with Jelly Roll, Thank and you. then when I got to do a deep dive and I got to see some of your drum covers and stuff, you're doing Nickelback stuff. You're doing some, some uh, like, you did the little Nas song, little yeah. you know, and it's like you're, you've got some serious modern-day I hate to say gospel chops, but I mean, you have some no. serious like hand foot combinations. Plus, you were in a bunch of metal bands, so you got the speed yes. on the feet and stuff. So really, really cool style. So I'm like, but this guy's personality, he's approachable. He's larger than life. He's friendly. Never forgets a name. I mean, you are going to be doing just fine in this industry. Bro. Thank you, dude. That's that's uh, that's crazy to hear you say, man, that's. That's amazing. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. And like, I, I mean, I, I feel like you really, you know, you really nailed my, my personality. Cause I'm, <laughs> I'm a very, I have a very big personality. dude. Yes. I, can, I can be loud, but I'm also like a little, so I'm pretty like self-aware of like when I'm, if I'm being too loud and I like got to tame myself down. But yeah, I mean, I just, I love meeting people and I love talking to people. And like, I've just never been like, even when I would like fill in for bands or like anything like that, you know, I've, I've just always been 
even like, like I would fill in for bands and I wasn't even in their band, but I was like, okay, how can I help these people like get further? Okay. I know I'm not in their band, but how can I help promote them? And I would like go stand outside at their shows and like, at, like I would play their set. I'd be filling in, I'd play their set. And then I'd go like hustle their CDs or like hustle their merch or like try to meet people and be like, Oh yeah, I'm not their permanent drummer, but like, you got you need to listen to these guys like they're incredible you want to buy a cd and i'd just and like, like be hustling you should for... be you should be their <laughs> regular job <you> know? <laughs> dude <laughs> i'd just be hustling for like anyone i could and like but also i was through that i was able to make like my own friendships and like you know create like relationships with people that um you know even even if i even if i don't see them or like not able to talk to them like i hope that they still took like if they hear my name, they still like took a good memory from like, even if it sure. was one interaction, you know, like, cause one, one, it, it only takes one interaction for someone to like decide whether they're going to like you or not, you know, yes. like it's because if, if that first interaction is bad, the odds of you ever being a, creating a friendship or anything with that person is, is very unlikely. But yeah, man, I just, I try to like, I'm not perfect. I've, you know, I'm a, I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm, I'm a, we you all know, are, yeah. I'm, I'm, a human, I'm a human you know and so sometimes i have my bad days and i'm sure there's people that i've you know come in contact with accidentally that just <laughs> caught me on it not the right day and i maybe fussed about something but you know um i hope to i, I hope if i ever do run into those people i can have that conversation and correct that wrong but you know yeah. and it's just uh um, I, I just i love meeting and i love talking to people and i love like we all just dude you you we just all have so we just all have a different story and to like really um you know listen to someone and to like really understand you can you can like learn something from just about anybody you know sure. what i'm saying like even even you can apply that and you can apply that lesson into just everything that you do like there's so many drummers that i feel don't realize that like even if you i feel like some drummers really um compare and contrast like oh i can do that or like I, i'm able to do that or this you know so so they like won't deep dive into a drummer because they feel that they have nothing to learn from them but like yeah. um but the thing is is you can take something away from any anybody and sure. like not only not only drums but like just in life in general like there's a you know there's probably a guy out here that i could go learn a life lesson from that has experienced something different in life than i have like i learn <laughs> i learn lessons from my girlfriend all the time like she you know she's lived a, a different life than i have and she's you know she, even though she's a little bit younger than me like she's experienced so many things that i like have never come in contact with and you know so there's just i think there's just le there's something that you can learn from everyone and even like i said even with drumming like you even if you feel that like you can play what another person's playing or like whatever like we're all so different and think differently like they may approach a fill differently than you do and like you can take that and learn from it and roll with it and create your own thing like there you can just take something from everyone but yeah, yeah just I'm sorry, just sorry. I, I just love talking to people man i love i love I love uh I like I like talking to people a lot. Yeah, you're you're definitely a people person. It definitely shows and you're just stealing stuff from people left and right and putting it in your bag of tricks and I stole some stuff from you today, man. I was watching some sort of a interview uh for Zildjian or something and um there was a ticker on the bottom with the transcription of all your fills and I was like I was like I was I was like, oh, okay, that's what he's doing. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd have to really slow it down, but I'm a good reader so I read it and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to put that in my back pocket. So Yo, I think uh I think that was my interview with uh Dan Kirby. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes, bro. I I don't know if you guys know each other, but I definitely have to link y'all, man. He is awesome. He's a, he's yeah. an, he's a dude from Australia. He plays for like he plays with like a lot of different people and he's just an aw he like does stuff for Zildjian Australia and everything and he's just yeah. an awesome awesome dude to talk to but he he is actually the one that transcribed all of that and like put it on paper and cuz I've been wanting to do that for a really long time but I don't know the forms to yeah. use for that so he did it and I was like yo this is sick <laughs> uh, yeah no I mean people are going to be stealing from me now it's written out it's Perfect. for all time but I'm just talking to you I get the real a sense of just how important music and drumming is in your life and just how hard this has been because i'm looking back much like me you, you know you're in the fifth grade band 
And mm-hmm. then I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you did one year in the marching band at the University of Louisville. And there was all sorts yeah. of bands. You had your first, I think your first concert was Motley Crue. And you got your first drum set at 14. And then you're touring the world with a metal band. What was what was that band? And what was that experience like? Because you're saying it was a grind. It was a hustle. Oh, yeah. I can imagine, especially if it's a do-it-yourself situation. You're in yeah. bands. You're doing and it the didn't thing. Even like- it didn't even start like it's yeah so i like started in metal um when i was like coming into it like um back in like 2009 i joined my first metalcore band uh we didn't really do anything we we it was just like a bunch of friends that just got together and like whatever like my first band ever was um was a a hair metal band called bullet when i was a sophomore in high school and we all did the makeup and all that good stuff like tease the hair and all it was a glam band it was a glam yeah it was a glam band now so my first band ever was a glam band and we were not a cover band we played originals we wrote originals like we just were 15 and didn't have money to go record it you know and our parents were like thought it was just a phase so they didn't want to put money to go and obviously they didn't know anything none of our parents were involved in music so they didn't know anything about recording or how to go about it so we just never did we just played shows we won like a battle of the bands whatever and then um that fell apart you know just high school kids grow apart and uh become a senior and i joined this this we me and my friends make this heavy band and didn't really do anything but through that i uh, playing uh, that's when i got introduced to the local scene that's when i figured out that bands like there was local bands i, I like didn't know that existed uh because i thought that any band that played on a stage was like a really was just a big deal <laughs> And so, like, you know, I'd go, I started going to these local shows and I'd, you know, be in a room with like 100, 150 kids and just seeing bands playing. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. I wish I could do this. And um, yeah, uh, so through that, I ended up joining this band. Uh, There's a couple bands in between, but then uh, I joined this band, O Kingdom. And they, that was my first band that I ever toured with. Uh, We were, we were like a metalcore band and uh, I booked all of our tours. and with the help of like the first tour i had help from someone else but uh beyond that it was like i booked all of our tours from 2011 to 2016 and we were in a 15 passenger van and um you know i i slept on the bottom bunk and yeah dude um but you got some skills together where you had to you got to plan the, uh, a budget and when loading is and what the mileage is and get all the routing and make sure you get well, somewhere to so, sleep and so at that, I will say, at the oh crap, I'm sorry. Um, at that time, Did I didn't know anything. Yeah, no, I have my 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 guy, my little uh, oh. my little uh, it's a <laughs> it's a cap. It's like a little diamond cap. Oh, yeah, all right, just, okay. I like accidentally hit it and it popped out. Uh, but uh. no, so we um, I didn't really know anything about that. I was just mad young. I was like. I think I was 18 or 19 and not knowing a single thing that what I did, I just knew that I needed to contact venues and promoters and other local bands in different cities. And I, I didn't, I, I knew I wasn't going to make money. I was like, I just want to get on the road, like whatever, let's just get our name out there. Cause I thought that's what we had to do. So booked all these tours and, you know, did some fun stuff. It was my funnest mem- some of my funnest memories, man. Like, you know, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just young and like, we just would save up money to go on tour and then come back home and work and then save up money and go on be, tour. Be in was, debt. Was, you come back in debt and you're like, what am I going to do? Yeah. 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 And uh, we would just be stoked if we like made, like sold like a hundred dollars in merch or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, we were in a van and we were just, you know, we were just doing it. The drives were ridiculous and it was crazy, uh, yeah. but it was so fun. Like I, I wouldn't take that back for anything, but, but you're, but you're managing that, now, right? I mean, so you got some skill yes. sets. You're managing yeah, a couple yeah, of I've, bands now. I've learned, I've learned a lot more. So, so, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll tie into that through the okay. story. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. so uh, through O Kingdom, I started getting noticed because we were touring and uh, other bands were hitting me up to fill in. So I was like, Oh, this is a perfect opportunity to like promote my band. And uh, so we, I started touring with these other bands, but was selling my band CDs and their band CDs to like, just try and like get everyone's name out there and get my name out there at the same time. And um, so through that, uh, I ended up doing my first like national tour where I went to Canada and did full U S with this band called Siler. Uh, and I was yeah. filling in for a band called Beyond the Shore. Um, so it was 
be on the shore in Siler, and we did like some northeast states, and then we went to did Canada, be on the shore, and so on and so forth. Well, through that, I became friends with this band called Siler. And over the next three years, I was filling in for other bands and still touring with O Kingdom. And then in 2016, I was filling in for this band called Picturesque. And we were on the way home from a U.S. tour that we just did. Still in a van. Still still in a van. Um, this is 2016. Still in a van. And get a call from Siler. And they're like, yo, can you, what do you do next week? Can you come do the show? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, what do you want for pay? And I was like, hey, I, I don't know. I've never been paid before. So I don't know, like. I don't I know what it. to ask. I was like, yeah. honestly, in my in my head, I was like, this is an opportunity to get to the next level. So I was like, you know what? Don't pay me. Just cover my gas. I'll drive to New York and we'll play this show. So sure enough, got home, learned the songs, drove to New York, played the show, and then drove back home. And then they asked me to do it again. So I went and did the same thing again. And I was just like, I'm going to show these motherfuckers I'm dedicated. Like, I'm, I want them to ask me to join. And then they asked me to do a tour with them in July of 2016. And then it was that tour that they were like, Hey, we're, we're going to add you to the band. Badass. Um, but as like a permanent fill in. So I was a, I was a part of, si I joined Siler in 2016 as a permanent fill in became an official member in 2018. Uh, but we did like, that's when I got in promos and stuff or, you know, whatever you want to call it. And um, so through that, I did a, like a lot of my extensive touring with them. Um, that's where I went to like Japan and, and Europe and uh, Australia, Puerto Rico did like multiple U S tours, but sadly um, there was just never, never any momentum behind them. And then there was like a fuck up with, with the, the label, like really the label they were on really fucking dropped the ball. Um, and uh, it kind of just, you know, the guys had been doing it for a long time. So there was just kind of like this weird energy where it was like, you know, they had been doing it for like eight or nine years. And it was just kind of, uh, it, 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 I, I felt bad. It was just a weird situation, but I, I wasn't ready to stop. So I was like, I'm going to do whatever I can. And so then COVID hit and obviously Ouch. Nashville wasn't really shutting down and uh, Kentucky wasn't really shutting down. So I was like, this is my opportunity to like, so I started going uh, to Nashville a whole lot because I picked up this band called Devil's Cut and we were the guy that we were recording with in Columbus ended up getting hired by Jelly to work out of his studio and so I was going down me and Devil's Cut were going down to write and record songs uh, and doing it like the Nashville way because no one in metal is was doing it the Nashville way at that time uh, like no one in metal was like going out and like riding with dudes in Nashville. And I was like, this is what they need. Like, this is what we need to do. No one's doing this. We're, let's do this country rock thing. Like, Sorry. I'm going to help you guys out. No one's doing country rock. Like, this was before Hardy started putting breakdowns in his songs. Uh, Lakeview was just coming out. Like, they were they were, they were, were way ahead of it. They just haven't got the love that they deserve yet. But uh, anyways, yeah, so that, that led me into managing. But I picked them up, and I was going to Nashville all the time. And through that, that's when I started going to Red Door, which is when we met. That's right. And um, because I was like, hey, I was told uh, I, I was hanging out with um, um, Jake Summers from yeah. Luke Holmes. Yeah. And then I was, uh, do you remember Kenny Dixon before he passed? Yes, um, of course. I was, yeah. oh, yeah. yo, oh my God, Rich. I completely yeah. forgot to tell you this, bro. Right. I forgot to tell you this. Kenny was my introduction into country. Or it's into not not into country. I grew up in Kentucky, so I was around country. But he, Kenny Dixon, was the reason that he was my first time ever going backstage to a country show to do like that networking. And so, and it was on your all's tour. Kane was direct support for you guys. Yes, I believe it was um, 2019. Yeah, it was. It was 2019. And Kane was direct support for you. It was it was fall? It was a month before he passed away. Yeah, um, it was so unfortunate. So unfortunate, it, dude. It killed me when I got that news because me and him had just created a friendship, and it was it, dude. It killed me to find that out. Like, yeah. but he he like I started like networking with all these different drummers that I didn't know um, were in the country world, but also knew who I was from metal. So like Miles from Cody Johnson, uh, Kenny. Um, Jake Summers, uh, Taco with Morgan, like yeah. um, all those dudes were like already following me and I had no idea. And I was like, oh shit, like 
I need to like talk to these guys. Like these guys can like help me give advice on what I need to do. Sure. Uh, Cause I was turning 26, 27. And I really just needed to like, I was like, Hey man, if I'm going to you know make a living from doing this, I really need to think about like my choices right now. And uh, so yeah, that's like, the time man. 26. That's when dude, like me and Jim Riley and everybody moved yeah. to town. That seems like to be the, yeah. you hit 25, you get that quarter life crisis and you're like, Hey man, I got to make some bold moves here. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I was told. Uh, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call. My bad. That's all right. Um, um so I, oh, Rich, I'm so sorry. Um, can I text? That's my tour manager. Can I text him real quick? You got it, man. So no big deal, guys. We're on the show, and we usually keep all this stuff, warts and all, man. But uh, uh, Cody's coming to us today from a dressing room in Frisco, Texas, which is going to be the home of the 59th annual ACM Awards, which is airing Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday yeah. night. So you guys tune in because Cody will be back on the drums backing up Jelly. Yeah. Um, sorry, I had to text him and be like, hey, man, I'm on a podcast. I can't talk right now. Oh, um, yeah, man. But yeah, so uh, I started going down there a lot in uh, in 2020 for, for that reason and to network and meet people. And I just happened to like meet a lot of people that were surrounded by Jelly, not meaning to because I, I didn't even know who Jelly was. Right. And I, don't, I knew I knew he had a song called Save Me. Um, I never really listened to him. And then, um, yeah, and, I, and then in 2021, I, I ended up getting that call. But yeah, all through that was how I like started managing and how I got from like metal into country. And it was just like, I just I started just going to Nashville a whole lot because Siler wasn't really doing anything and we weren't really talking. And I was like, man, I can't like I can't stay here like I don't. I need to figure like I have to figure something out. And I was like, I love country music. Like I've always loved, you know, there was a in my rebellious stage. I hated country music because sure. I was like everybody in my hometown only listened to country and everybody was a redneck. And I was like, I don't want to be like that. I want to be different. So I started wearing skinny jeans and chains and like, you know, whatever, like just to just to stand out. But, you know, deep in the roots, I was like country music singers. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Yeah, yeah, man, of course. Dude. Um, but yeah, man. So, I, and I kind of came back into myself around like 2017, 2018. And I really like found, started kind of finding who I was becoming. And like through that, I was like, man, you know what? Like, I think, I think I want to like dive back in the country and like really try to see if this is like something for me and dude, it, and it just everything, you know, everything worked out how, you know, in God's plan or that's right. There's, uh, or, you know, there's, whatever there's destiny, man. Yeah, destiny, manifestation, God's plan, whatever everyone believes, you know what I'm saying? Like, and energy is the world, you yeah. know, the universe. And it, it, it's I'm, bi I'm like, big into the law of attraction, man. Big, yeah, big. And you're the, you're the perfect drummer for him. So you are bound to find him because you find each other. You have a pocket, you have power, you have yeah. energy, you have the those new modern shops, and you have um, the, the feet. And then you got the hands from the marching band. Now, were you self-taught? Did you learn how to do the five-stroke rolls and flams, or was that from the university? Um, no. So, um, I'll be I'll be completely real with you, man. My town was so small when I grew up there. Yeah. Um, our high school did not give a fuck. Hey, our high school did not give a fuck about <laughs> music at all. Yeah, our high school you. only cared about um our high school only cared about football and sports and baseball which i played football and baseball my whole life in in high school and everything um so when i quit football and baseball in when i quit football and baseball in uh my junior year i ended up going to marching band my senior year of high school but we didn't have like a percussion instructor or like anything really so i was really never taught much of yeah. that like i knew i was taught my paradiddles and my six stroke rolls and so on and so forth but a majority uh, and you know flams and whatever like our sheet music was like the basic of basic concert band music it really wasn't until i went to a camp between um i went to a music camp at eastern kentucky university between my junior year and senior year Mm -hmm. um and uh to play steel drums and i was like 
just trying something different, trying something. Isn't new. that a crazy instrument? Uh, There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's like C's here, C sharps over here. Yeah, it's just a whole. It's a whole scale, but it's like all scattered out and not in order. Crazy. Uh, but it's like also when you play the scale, though, it like makes sense to not go in a circle, but to be like you know C D E, you know whatever it is, so on and so forth. Like to go yeah. just like this, but instead of a going because if you went like this, your hands wouldn't be able to like go in a circle. But the fact that it's staggered it helps like with the movement which is like whole crazy thing to think about that someone was able to come up with that totally. concept but yeah um dude yeah uh so so that going there i ended up um meeting like a lot of like college percussion people and stuff and kept in contact with them until my my freshman year of college well i ended up getting asked to join the intercollegiate steel band my freshman year. So, which is basically like the University of Kentucky, University of Louisville, Eastern Kentucky, Western Kentucky, and I think Northern Kentucky University all get together and bring their steel bands in. They like choose two to three people out of each of their percussion uh, groups and they bring them into Eastern Kentucky because Eastern Kentucky has like the steel band, whatever. Um, and we all just do pieces and we put on a show. Uh, but through that, I ended up meeting all these juniors and seniors gotcha. uh, at college that knew all this shit. And they took me into their dorm and I stayed with them. And that and it was a, a whole percussion. It was only percussionists and only drummers. And so they introduced me to gospel chops, Dude. which is where I got in fact which is where my whole idea of drumming changed because at that time all i knew was metal and i was like oh yeah like if it's not double bass or like if it's not this well it's 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 whack but then i saw gospel drumming and i my whole world completely changed yeah. um and my whole outlook on drumming changed and and i just i became obsessed like i started in incorporating gospel chops into like metal and then like because of my country background, I just already had that. And like, um, but yeah, so, so I did, I did March. That's when I got really introduced to like a bunch of the different rudiments and so on and so forth. Cause I was only really taught basically like the basic, basic rudiments at, my, at high school. And that's no, that's nothing against like the band teachers or anything. It's just, there's no funding for music at that school. There, sure. there wasn't, there wasn't. But now, but I now mean, your hands, because... dude. I'm just saying, like, there's not a lot of metal guys. A lot of, a lot of metal guys will focus on their feet. You know, China halftime. You know what I mean? And their hands are okay. But you, you have like an extreme control over your accent and your unaccented notes. Your unaccented notes are. That's what everyone should strive for is very, very close to the head. So there's that rolling motion. There's that percolation. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good hands, man. You know, that makes, buzz, dude, that buzzes, means open strokes. It's great. That means a world that you notice that because the amount of time and, and, and honestly, I need to get back on it because I, I feel like I've um, I'm going to say something very real to you right now. I feel <laughs> like I've fallen. We've been so busy that I haven't got to like you'll 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 probably understand what I'm about to say. We've been so busy that I haven't got to just be with myself and my drum kit. And I can't tell you how long sure. I haven't been able to like sit down and learn new things. And I like, and, and like just be with my drums in, in so long. And I feel like it's kind of like held me back almost to a sense um, where I would sit for hours. Could, and the reason, sorry, I'm bringing this up because what you just said means a lot. Because I used to sit for hours and work on stick heights. Sure. I would sit and be like, uh, I would go off of a scale of three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. So it'd be like, you know, three would be like your lowest of lowest go zones. And I'd do like, I don't know, a, a minute of it. And then I'd go to six and do a minute of that. And I'd go to nine. And then I go to 12 and then I go to 15 and then I'd go, I'd go to the right hand or I'd go back down and then I go to the right hand and then I would do them together. And I would do that one exercise alone takes every bit of like 15 to 20 minutes. You know what I'm saying? If you do each one for a minute yeah. and, um, 
And dude, I spent so much time on that because I really, really wanted to pride myself on ghost notes because the metal drummers that I looked up to at the time, um, or I, I still look up to, I still think they're the most incredible drummers ever, but, sure. um, the, that I looked up to, uh, they all had really good ghost notes. And I was like, I want to be like on that level. So I like did everything that I could to like be to like get my notes like that. Also like marching band as was, well, because yeah. we had to do stick heights for marching band. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I marched uh, my freshman year at the university of Louisville. And then uh, my band started touring and I went to my marching band instructor and she said, <laughs> she said, uh, um, good bless her soul she, us she or them asleep. it's us or Art. them you got to choose <laughs> yep she was she was like uh yeah if you miss a game it's a letter grade and Ugh. i was like okay i'm going on tour yeah. <laughs> like, awesome but so but yeah man yeah i uh yeah i did a lot of i did quite a bit of schooling but i, w I wish i could have got into marching band sooner but like i said my my high school was so not oriented for anything with music they like just didn't give a fuck so i was like I was like, I wanted to play football and march, but my coach was literally like, no, you have to choose. You can't, you can't suit up for the game and then not be in the locker room at halftime because you have to go march and put on a show or whatever. I was like, I could just not do the show. Like, can I just do the competition? He's like, well, what's the point of being a marching band if you're not going to do the halftime show? It's like, you want to play football or do you want to do this? And I was like, dude, I, yeah. I want to play football. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, but, um, uh, Obviously, inevitably, we see where where I was meant to end up. I hope, but yeah, man, I always think about journeys and decisions in life because I was thinking, like, you know, I kind of discovered I was never really like an athlete as a young kid. I discovered mm -hmm. my inner athlete later in life um, because I was so focused on the music thing, yeah. and I was always, you know, in the last decade i got really interested in acting i was like what would have been cool if i had actually done that in high school and developed some of those yeah. skill sets but i was just so so hyper focused on music just like you you've been focusing on this thing for a very long time and usually when you get this life-changing opportunity a life-changing opportunity like playing with jelly it usually comes down to relationships is that what happened yeah. how did you get the job um so how i got the job with jelly was was literally um yeah, bring it, bringing it back to where I found out that, you know, a couple of these country drummers were already following me. So I, I reached out and I was like, hey, let's get lunch. And like, because uh, my my whole thing, uh, my whole life has been networking and um, creating relationships, even even if nothing comes of the relationship, like just having that relationship and doing the introduction in general is so, so, so important, man. Like even like so important, you know, like uh like not that no one is more important than any other person but like like no one's above anybody but but create you know when you meet someone and and networking and creating those relationships is like so vital to like anything that you do in life you know what i'm saying because you never know who someone knows and you never know like what someone is capable of doing like you don't know if like they'd be willing to help you or so on and so forth but it's like you don't go into meeting these people Expecting thinking that, that they're here to but, help you it's just yeah. to create the friendship and to create the relationship and like that's the most important part of it but yeah. you know when i saw that these drummers who were playing for artists that i was listening to were following me i just i just never thought like you know when i thought country i was just like oh they you know they get hired in like you know they're it, they interchange like they don't ever have the same band and then i was like oh wait no they do have the same band they just put the promotional focus on the artist yes and and I was like, shit. So that's when I found, you know, found out all these drummers. And so I like hit, um, you know, talked to Kenny Dixon and then like I hit Jake Summers up and we happened to be in LA at the same time. And um, I went and met up with him and, and we got lunch uh, in like 2019. Yeah. And, uh, and I was like, dude, like, you know, not to like be that guy. I was like, but what? I was like, how did, how do I get into this? Like, what do I do? And he brought up a conversation that he had with you. Yeah. Um, and he was like, bro, when I met Rich, he was like, Rich literally told me, he was like, the best decision that you could ever make in life was, is to move to Nashville. Like if you're trying to make something happen so on and so forth, like you have to move to Nashville. And he was like, I think that he was in, cause was it, I, I might get the stories mixed up, but you used to live in Ohio. 
Uh, no, I, I'm, I'm oh. from Connecticut and then grew up okay, in maybe, Texas, but yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe it was Jake then or, uh, J- Someone, Jake, yeah, Jake grew up in um, uh, Long Island. Okay, yeah, yeah, I got the stories. I got my stories mixed up then. But he told me he told me a story about how what you told him something like uh, Jason moved to Nashville, or Jason was like there and basically uh, told you like yo you have to move here or we got to find someone else or maybe that was like uh jake summer story that luke was moving to nashville and like he needed to move there or he was gonna have to like find someone else or something yeah. he was basically just was I, like i said I, I it's been years since he told me the story but i just remember it the the basis of it being like hey these you gotta guys, be here like, man you got we have be our here. job because we had to move to nashville like yeah. if you want to get there you have to to be there. Like if you want to be in it, you have to immerse yourself. And I never thought of it like that because my whole life, I had always thought of like, if I, if I want to be a part of something, I have to immerse myself in it. But I never thought of like the city as a place that you had to immerse yourself in. Like I thought of like people and groups and like, if I wanted to be in metal, I had to listen to metal. I had to know everything that was metal. So that's what I thought I was applying to country, but it, I was, a, I wasn't applying it correctly because being in Nashville and going out to those bars is so important at, for like the networking and, and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I, because so talking to him and, and him being like, yo, you know, you got to move to Nashville. Um, you know, and you know, he told me your story that, or, you know, what you had talked to him about. And then, yeah. Um, he, you know, was telling me his story and like what he talks to me about. And, um, he was like, basically at the end of the day, he was like, yeah, you just got to move there. You know, like, it's just what it comes down yeah. to really. And I mean, when I met like, you, I immediately followed you. You know what I mean? It's like, I looked, yeah. you, I immediately looked you up and followed you, you know? And, um, and then we reconnected a couple years yeah. later. You had done the thing. You had changed your yeah. life, man. This, this amazing life changing opportunity came along. Yeah. But getting uh, but but getting into the jelly camp, it, it was literally just like, like I said, that studio that the producer worked out of that Devil's Cut was in. Uh, he worked out, a, he got hired to work out a jelly studio for Jelly, and it was just like a, a weird instance of like fate, like yeah. colliding because it was like I had known that producer since 2015, and then all of a sudden, and he only did metal and rock, yeah. and then all of a sudden he comes to Nashville one time and meets Jelly, and Jelly says. I'll move you down, work out of my studio. And so he starts working out of his studio. And they, and then it just so happens the band that I manage, he's their producer. That's so cool. we're, we just go to Jelly Studio all the time. And through that, I met like his, you know, his, some of his management and his security and some of his friends. And, you know, so I became friends with all them, not meaning to just creating relationships. Like I just, I, you know, cause like I said, I didn't know who Jelly was. I just knew that he did music. Um, And through that, when, when it was time for him to need a drummer and whoever showed up, uh, his drummer showed up and didn't really, uh, you know, cut, you know, cut the the cake where, you know, he wasn't (laughs) cutting it for what was needing to be done. Yeah. Uh, you know, for what he was about to do, uh, because I had like met all those people on accident over the past year, just by happenstance they all had like followed me and seen my drum videos and they're like, yo, you got to call, you got to call him. Like, and, uh, so after about 10 people being like, Hey, call Cody, call Cody. He's like, all right, get this fucking kid down. Like, shut up. Just get this kid down here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? From what I, from what I heard, but yeah, that, cause you have some killer, essentially- well, highly produced, very well shot cover videos where you, where you play tunes and, mm-hmm. you know, blow over them a little bit. You showcase your, your chops yeah. and your ability and that those That's are like that. I like to have fun with those things, man. Dude, those, those are, are all those are cards, purely man. for my entertainment and like my fun. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy and blessed if like anyone like that people see them and like love, like, like it, you know what I'm saying? Like that means more to me than anything because like, there's no reason I should be taking a Daniel Bradbury song and doing just chopping over it. Like, <laughs> It, it, it's just so fun man but i think that's what it should be about i think it should just be like you ain't having fun with it man like why are we here you totally. know like why are, yeah so but it, it's a I calling card people. man it's a, it's a calling card that thing exists and people are like well what does he look like what does he sound like how does he play yeah. boom there you go you know? yeah yeah dude those those videos changed everything like so much for me to be honest like i don't my channel's not big you know what i'm saying i think i only have 
you know, well, I mean, okay, to some people, this might be a big number, but, you know, compared to like the goal that I'm shooting for, uh, yeah. you know, and to, to compared to other people, you know, I only have like 10,000 subscribers, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'm very grateful to even have 10,000 subscribers. You know, we're always shooting to, you know, be better and grow and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, I don't have the biggest channel in the world, but, you know, the people that do subscribe to me and like watch my videos like it means so much and it's just dude just because it's it's just fun man it's it's so yeah. cool so and it's awesome like that anybody can can gain inspiration from it or or anything like that you know because it's just me in the studio with my buddies just having a good time yeah and it, that you know that's all i want to do man i just want to have fun and and make people smile and if i can if i can influence or you know or do something that that someone's like oh that's cool you know what is that like that's that's all i could ever ask for you know no, you're so, doing that, man. So, you, so Jelly you. gets you down. You get coming to Nashville, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So, so, well, no, no. So, he Jelly had his people call, and and oh, dude, this story, this is the craziest part of the story. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, dude. I love doing these things, man. I I'm sorry if I'm annoying, dude. I I, I can talk all day, bro. I no, it's great. No, I, I I just think it's great to learn how you the thing came about. So it was relationships yeah. and. Yeah, so it was always the relationships, and finally, these people were all coming to Jelly and telling him, and and he was like, "All right, we'll give him a call." So it's a Wednesday night. I'll never forget this, dude. I'm, <laughs> I, at this time, I was bartending. Um, to Wednesday night, I got off early. I don't know where I was mentally, but I decided to get shit hammered. So I got shit hammered, and it's three a.m. and I'm sitting at this bar. Um, shit, speaking of shit hammered. I bet you'd be a great bartender. I always think I'm like, I've never had that job, but it, you got to oh, have a personality, dude. you know, you got to have a I, personality. I love bartending, dude. It was so fun. I bet but you I was cleaned also, up, bro. Cleaned up. I, I also like didn't give a shit when I was bartending, bro. Like bartending taught me so much about respect. Um, and taught me how disgusting some people in this fucking world are to wow. be, to be completely honest sure. with you. Sure. Um, I, uh, I, what do you, I, you know, what this, do you mean? What do you mean whole, by that? The respect, like the, Oh dude, just like, you know, on just the, when I came in contact with so many people that when I would, you know, I was bartending, they wouldn't treat me like a person. They would treat me like I was serving them. And I was like, and granted, yes, I am serving you drinks, but I am not below you. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what the fuck I do. Yes. Like, I'm here for, I'm here because I like doing this. Like, and <laughs> so just people would like, there were some people that would just talk down to me and I would just be like, yo, who are you talking to? Like, you think I'm not going to talk back to you? You think that because I'm behind this bar that I can't come out from behind the bar? Like, I'm, I'm right here, buddy. You know, yeah. or like, I was not scared. You can ask, um, Bro, you can ask uh, any anybody that I bartended with. If someone had a tab and didn't tip, I would. In, I felt I would feel so disrespected that I would literally take the check and put it in their face, and I would be like, "Hey, is there an issue? Did I not? Were your drinks not good? Because you were telling me your drinks are, were good all night. What's is there an issue? Why you know, you know, this is how I make my money. I make two dollars an hour. Yes, I chose this job, but you know, I chose this because I get to interact with people. You're not going to run up a $220 tab and leave me three bucks. I was like, you're not that fucking cheap dog. Like, that's not cool. Or I would be like, I'd be like, Hey, was your service not good? Like I felt we had a really good repertoire. We were nice. I was, I made your drinks a little bit stronger. Like, this is cool. Why are you, why are you stiffing me? Did did something wrong? You know? And And so what what would they say? What what would, what, 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 you know, they would just, they would be stunned that I would even say anything. Yeah. They'll be like, uh, uh, and I'll be like, whoa, 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 what? Well, what's good? What's going on? Like, or <laughs> what's you know? They would literally just be so, and it wasn't me trying to bully people into giving a tip. It was me trying to call disrespectful people out in front of other and like in front of their friends to let them know that hey, you're with a fucking asshole, or like, yo, you're like your friend sucks. You know, there's nothing like, worse than a bad tipper, bro. Like, dude, no. I call I call my friends out if they tip bad. You know what I'm saying? If I it literally and and there has been so many times I'm sorry, I, I love this conversation, bro, because I'm so <laughs> I'm so on it, dude. But there is literally times that I'll be sitting with friends at, at a at a table and we'll get up to leave and I'll look at all their checks and I'll see what they left and see if it was like 
you know, that's probably, you know, not the right thing. But like, I want to make sure that like, if someone is serving us, that like, that's an hour of their time to make money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if, if we all run up a $50 tab and you guys tip two bucks or three bucks, like, dude, come on. Like, bro, we, we make enough money to where we don't need to like, don't disrespect someone like, dude, I that, never, man. Like, we're here to get- ever, ever tip less than 20%, even absolutely. if they suck. Absolutely. I'll let them know that they yeah, can improve. Yeah. If they suck, I'll be like, hey, this was not good, but I know that this is how you make a living, yeah. so there you go. Yeah, yeah. and it's, and the, you know, and I'm, like I said, I'm not perfect, man. There's sometimes that I, like, I'll have shitty service and I have to be reminded that, like, hey, you know what? This person may just be having a bad day. Yeah, And, okay. like, and my, and my saint of a freaking woman is there to remind me of that sometimes because I get... I get pretty flustered pretty easy if like I feel disrespected or misunderstood. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, so like sh- sh- she'll calm me down sometimes, but I've, I've never not, I've never not tipped anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'll, I'll always, but it, it, in the circumstance of like the table, there's been multiple times where I've like covered for other people. Like if I saw that their tip wasn't good enough, I'll like, I'll go back to my check. And if I tipped like, 20 i'll change it to 40 or something just to make sure like the table is mathematically like worth the hour that that server just put into it like interesting i'm I'm very yeah i'm very big on on tipping like i i hate the the whole not tip culture like it's it's such a it's so you know it now now if we're in a circumstance where like the employees are making fifteen to twenty dollars an hour, and, and they want to tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, all right, this, you know, this is a little different. But like, the servers that are making like two bucks, bartenders that are making two to five bucks. Like, no, but come on, man. Like, it's that's, yeah, that's tough. Just, yeah. it's a respect thing. But uh, totally. Yeah, so I, you know, I would just call people out, and sometimes they change it. Sometimes they get mad. Sometimes they try to get in my face, and that would just never work out. And you know, it just like uh, not that we would fight, but they, you know, they just ended up getting you know, pushed out because, yep. you know, you're not going to mess with me kind of thing. But uh, I'm not going to fight any. I'm not going to lose my job over you. But also, uh, I won't hit anyone unless I'm hit. And then yes, uh, unless they touch like, a, you know, a family member or like a girl then or a friend. I, I'll fight for a friend before I'll fight for myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I can relate. But uh, yeah, man. Um, so I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. Let's <laughs> Oh, so, sorry, you're, so you're so you're doing this on a I'm Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. So Wednesday night, I got off work, 3 a.m. I'm shit hammered. I get a call from the producer, Bayless, and he's like, Hey, how well do you know the Jelly Roll songs? And I was like, Uh, I don't know. I went through them. And he was like, Do you know them or not? And I was like, oh, dude, it's rap. Yeah, sure, whatever. Like, and this because this was before like he was f- fully into country. And um I was like, Yeah, sure, whatever, it's rap. I'll just you know, do just learn the beat and I can just play over it, whatever. And uh, he's like, all right, cool. And then put the phone down and I get another phone call from uh, the guitar player from Siler because they were happened to be in Nashville recording with the same producer. Ah. Uh, they were like writing with that producer. Um, and he's like, yo, how well do you know the Jelly songs? And I was like, dude, Bayless just called me and told me this. Why? I was like, what's going on? And they were like, uh, he was like, do you know him or not? And I was like, yeah, dude, what's up? And he was like, all right, you're probably going to get a phone call. And hung up. Then I was like, okay. So I just, they had, Bayless had been telling me that he was trying to get me to drum for Jelly for like the past five months before that. So I just didn't think any, I was just like, whatever. It's another one of those phone calls. And uh, then the next morning, I also worked at a e-cigarette shop, a vape shop at the time. So I was bartending at night and working at the vape shops in the afternoon. And so we it's 10 in the morning i just opened the store i'm customers are coming in i'm helping customers i get a call a phone call from a 615 number and uh and it was i was like yo i have to like take this call and i like paused the customer i was like this is really important like life-changing important and uh so i i answered it and they're like hey how fast can you be in nashville and i was like i'm at work right now when do you need me by and they were like we need you as soon as you could be here. And I, they were like, how fast can you be here? I was like, I could be there by seven. And they were like, perfect. So then hung up and I was like, all right. So I checked the rest of the customers out and I called my buddy and I was like, Hey man, I got to close the store. Can you come cover for me? Like, I got to go to Nashville. 
And he was like, what the fuck? And I was like, yeah, like, this is a big favor. Please help. And he was like, yeah. And so I literally, I walk out, I lock, I close the store up. Hey, dude, my, the owner ever sees this, he's going to kill me. Love that guy. Um, but lock the store up and I leave. And then uh, I packed my drums and I drove to Nashville. My buddy ended up showing up to cover the store, but, um, but I left before he got there. And I drove and packed my drums up, drove to Nashville, got handed 18 songs to learn on my two-hour drive. And this is the best part. Obviously, getting learn, getting handed 18 songs to learn in a couple hours is it's on, impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. It's hard. Yeah, um, it's that's stressful as fuck. You know, especially if the, if you have to like learn them to go rehearse that night and then you have to play them uh, two days later. Like, so I'm driving, I'm stressing. I get near Nashville. I call them. I'm like, hey, where are we rehearsing? Where, where's the spot? And they're like change of plans jelly wants to go <laughs> to dinner it's like what and uh they're like yeah jelly wants to go do like a pre-tour dinner and i was like uh, or like a pre-year of shows dinner whatever it was and uh i was like dude i just got handed 18 fucking songs like we need to rehearse and they're like yeah we're gonna go to dinner and i was like all right so i show up and i happen to sit next to jelly at the uh, at the dinner and it, that this was like our first time, like kind of really hanging out. Yeah. And, um, and it, I'm, so I'm like, you know, just kind of like tapping and like shaking and, and he puts his hand on my shoulder and he goes, you look nervous, Bubba. He's like, are you okay? And I was like, Hey man, I was like, listen, I really want this gig. I just got handed 18 songs. I don't want to lose this gig. I really need to rehearse, but we're at this dinner. And he was like, you need to loosen up a little bit. And he's like, can we get a sh round of shots of tequila? And he, when the waiter brought in the tequila, he goes, every time you drop these off, he's like, go ahead and put in another order. So it was, he'd drop them off. And then 10 minutes later, there'd be another round of tequila. Oh my 10 God. minutes later, there'd be another round. We end up getting hammered once again. And then at 3 a.m they're like rehearsals at nine in the morning next day and i was like what the fuck I'm, like, I'm not gonna fucking make this somehow i made it no one else made it no one else was there at 9 a.m it was just me so i set up and i was like all right well i guess i can go through these songs so i set up and i was going through the songs everybody showed up around 11 so we practiced the first time we all met and practiced we practiced from 11 a.m to 4 p.m and then we had to load the trailer up and drove that night to go play a show for the first show we all played together was for 7,000 people. And we only had like five hours rehearsals on 18 songs that we might play. So how, how did it go? It was sick. It went, it went it was great. Sick. It went, I mean, it went about as good as it could for that, those circumstances, you know, like, I mean, we showed up and we just had to like, our, the guitar player was the only one that had been with not Jack, but uh, the other guitar player, Casey, he was the only one that had been with jelly for like years and years. So he knew all the songs. And so we basically just had to like cue off him for that hour set. And it was, what? it was crazy, but dude, it was like nerve wracking and unsettling, but it was so fun, dude. And uh, yeah, I guess like, so I, that was kind of your audition. Video. Your audition was yeah. a live gig and the yeah. hang more importantly than anything. Yeah. The, Thank you for saying that, dude. Yes, 100 percent. Jelly was like, get this guy here and have him sit next to me and let's see what his liver's like. Let's loosen yeah. this guy up. But he had faith that you could play the drums. But yeah. I, that would have freaked me out because I'm such a over preparer. I'd be like, I got to write. Yeah. Out I got to write out 18 charts. I got to have the tempo. Yeah. I got. But you were just like, we're doing this and we'll, we'll get through it. And this was, you know, and this was before I really learned a system that worked for me as far as charting. Um, cause I had never had to chart before, you know what I'm saying? Like when, with the metal songs, I would just, I would get like a week heads up and it, and I could, I can learn, uh, you know, eight metal songs in a week. Like that's not, that's yeah. cake. You know what I'm saying? Like I can do four or five songs a day like that, you know, and then just perfect them throughout the week. Um, with, as far as like metal songs, but with country, with country and, and like doing covers and stuff like that, I didn't, I never knew how people learn things so fast. And that's when 
going to Nashville is when I found out about the number system. And so I started doing all this research on the number system and it still just wasn't like, I was like, I get this for guitar players. I get this for like other, you know, whatever. I was like, but I, I don't know how this correlates to drumming. And it just what wasn't like sitting in my head. Right. And so I was like, I have to figure out a system to where I can learn songs fast that works for me. Right. And uh, so I, I ended up like coming up with, with my own, system in it and it i've got it i've pretty much got it down now now to where i can listen to a song five times and be able to go play it essentially but let, with the way that i like write it out so you um, write like like uh intro eight bars uh verse yeah, uh, yeah. seven bars so, the stop on the first the eighth mm-hmm. measure that kind of stuff yeah so in in my yeah in my note section i'll do i have this uh like a a pre written out thing that says like it says like intro V1, pre one, C one, post, V two, pre two, C two, post, bridge, solo. So like a breakdown yeah. thing of like what a, a normal song would be. Hell yeah. And then I'll listen to the song and I'll write out every measure of everything. So it's like intro, four bars, uh verse one, sixteen bars, chorus, eight bars, uh post, two bars, verse two, eight bars, you know, so you know, whatever. Um, and then, and then I'll go back and listen again and I'll listen for like stops. So I'll be like, um, or or, or I'll listen to like what, like if the whole song is on the snare drum or like if it does like rim clicks and then snare drum and then goes back, like I'll notate like rim clicks, snare here, bring snare in back to rim clicks, so on and so forth. And then I'll notate like, um, and then I'll go through for the third listen and I'll notate um stops it will be like stop on the three of measure four um nice. you know paw or huge choke on two of of nice. whatever and um so you, you know, write build. you write it out in the english language but not yeah. musical notation yeah yeah and it's like you know obviously like a shortened shortened english language to where i can like just go through or like if i have to like like no joke dude we got handed a similar situation two days, three days ago, before we played Billy Bob's last night, we got handed 20 songs that we might play. Like, uh, because because they were talking about how artists might show up to come do like a karaoke thing. Yikes. And they were like, you need to learn. Here's all the artists that might show up, learn these hit songs. And then if any other artists show up that we're not prepared for, learn these 15 cover songs or, or uh, these 12 cover songs. Like, you know, like a Garth Brooks song and like, can't you see and shit like that? Like just normal bar songs, learn all of these uh, just in case we don't know their song or like an artist shows up that we don't know. We didn't rehearse for or something. And so this is uh, that Billy, so, Billy Bob's like, Hey, this Tracy was, Bird this might was, stop by or, you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was like all these, these, we got, we got told that all these people might stop by. So we went and looked at like what their biggest songs were that we could go whatever. And we like, I had to, I notated 20 songs out in this one tab that we might play. And, but did, that was did, like, did they show up? I had to learn. Uh, two of them <laughs> did. Nice. <laughs> so, uh, Lainey, Lainey Wilson showed up and we got to play her song, Smells Like, Smell Like Smoke, which yeah. is, uh, oh my God. What Isn't a she fun great? Song. She's such She's a great. She's the best, dude. She's so, so real and uh, so, genuine and sincere so and talented. Yes, yes dude. Yeah. She, um, Bro, we we locked we locked eyes while we were playing, and she is like so intense on stage that it was like everything made sense as to not not only like is she just an incredible woman in general, but yeah. like the way that she works and moves and like interacts on stage just completely checks off everything as to why she is what she is, dude. Sure. And, yeah. and 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 that like in that aspect and like also her personality and her like just her as a human really like it just explains like why she is such a a, an entity in this world bro like she's she's awesome and she's been nothing but kind we got our hair done together one time by accident (laughs) we we uh because i dye my i dye my hair blonde and uh i went to oddly enough um do you know you know do you know who action bride is who is it Ashley McBride. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 So Ashley McBride, her stylist, does 
has works at a salon in Nashville, and, and that's who I go to to do my hair. Well, I was sitting in the chair getting my my hair dyed, and uh, the girl that's in the booth next to her, uh, her name's Cassie. She does Laney's hair. Yeah. And uh, and so Laney walks in, and me and Laney had already known each other just because we had like done so much stuff together, and uh, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And she was like, "What are you doing here?" And I was like, "Yo, I'm getting my hair done." Get my locks dyed, man. Literally just sat there and, and got our hair done together. And it, yeah. was, it was like that was like a really funny, like fun moment for her and I. And I think that was like that moment, like established mine and her like friendship, which was That's like great. super cool. I, uh, I saw some uh, yeah. some short hair pictures of you, maybe like in a video, like four years ago. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, super be, clean cut, buddy. So when did I, you decide to like grow up, like a uh, you know to do the mullet, man? Um, yeah, dude, I used to be clean cut and skinny and handsome and all kinds of stuff <laughs> dude it's crazy um yeah then i just then i discovered i really love pizza <laughs> who does it it's the perfect food even the nah, red baron is pizza. good man come on yeah uh, um yeah i man i actually had a mullet my whole um all growing up yeah there's um photos of me in elementary school all the way up until probably about like fourth grade that i, I had a mullet for, like for a really long time and then obviously you know my parents were like, oh, I think we need to cut this. And so I cut, you know, got my mullet cut and rocked, uh, rocked short hair for a while. And then when I got in my hair metal or in eighth grade, eighth grade through s- junior year, I had like the long swoopy emo cut hair. Yep. Um, oh no, actually, sorry. No, into, into college. Um, damn, I, I had long hair my whole uh, I did cut it once in high school for football. It was a it was a hazing thing for freshmen. I forgot about that. We were at football camp and and they made all the freshmen cut their hair into mohawks. Uh that oh, did dude, happen. I dude, I, that. I had the Dave Perfect. Weckl nineteen ninety uh, mullet, bro. The VO five <laughs> mullet, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go, dude. Yes. So I actually had long hair. Uh, besides that one time that I cut it, that I had to cut it for for football. Uh, I had long hair my whole life. Uh, I actually had to stop playing baseball because I refused to cut my hair any shorter than what the coach wanted. That was crazy. Um, and he made me quit basically, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but then, yeah, so I got into like my junior year of uh, college and that was when I got into my junior college and that's when I cut my hair short. So I had short hair, for a while then i got it like cleaned up when i got in siler because i was like trying to trying to find out like who i was or like what my image like what i wanted my brand to be or my image or whatever and um and then yeah so then when probably around i think it was covid actually um because all the barber shops shut down and i was like fuck dude if i'm gonna grow my hair I, I was really into like the whole satirical movement of like the pit viper thing, like the pit viper glasses and like uh, America and all that stuff. And I was like, dude, I was like, you know what? I haven't seen in a long time. I haven't seen a fucking mullet. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to grow a fucking mullet. You're like me and Morgan Wallen. Come on. (laughs) Well, dude. uh, Yeah. And it was, well, it, you know, it just happened to be that time that he he was getting known for his as well. Yeah. Um, Still haven't met that dude. Um, gotta, oh. I gotta meet that guy. But I'm, I'm, sure, um, it's I'm sure it'll happen. Yeah. Buddy. If we've been in, I can, dude, we've been in the same room so many times, and just I've, you know, I, I just I'm never that guy that wants to like press someone like that. You know, what I'm saying I don't want to because they got the, they get that shit all the time. So I'm just like not. It's hard for me to even do it to Jason too. Like, bro, I, it took me, it took me a long time because there was a lot of times that me and Jason were in the same room that I was like, man, I just. I don't want to bother him, bro. I was like, he's just so many people are talking to him and I just don't want to be, I don't want that memory. I don't want to be part of that memory. I want like, I want to be like, Oh yeah. Like I met Jelly Strummer and we had a good time. And so I, I, I got that chance at, uh, at Jelly's, uh, CMA after party at, uh, last year at, at Miranda's bar on Broadway. Um, and Jason and, and Brittany showed up Nice and, um, and I got to, cause they live down in where they live. And, um, and I got to, I also used to live in that town. And, and when I'm, when I first moved to Tennessee and, um, 
<laughs> and uh, I saw that they did something for Christmas in that town at the gas station that I used to like fill up at. And so I got <laughs> the opportunity to, to tell them, uh, I, re I really just wanted to, that was my introduction to them and meeting them for the first time was I went, I went up to him and I was like, Hey guys, I was like, I play drums for jelly. I just wanted to say what I thought what you guys did for at, at Christmas was really, really cool. I was like, I thought, I thought that was so nice and so genuine. And, um, so I got that, that was my introduction to Jason and, and Brittany was getting to like thank them for what they did for that, com that community. Cause That's they, great. Like, they didn't have to take the time out of their day to do that. And I That's thought awesome, that was man. so nice and so kind. And so that, that was cool to like, that was cool that that was my first interaction with them. And, yeah. and uh, the last, last time I, I, I ran into Jason, um, not long ago, I forgot where we were, but I, I don't know if it was the iHeart Awards or where we were, but I, I ended well, we, up. We were just side, side stage at the oh, iHeart. No, uh, it was Vegas. the CMT Awards. Yeah. 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 The CMT Awards. Um, and I, I, I ran into him. Uh, wait, no, the, the iHeart Country Awards. Wait, well, Austin. or was it the iHeart Country Festival that we were just at in, yes, in uh, was, Austin? We yes, were side that's, stage that's, watching you guys. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. You guys, we were walking off and you guys were side stage and, um, and Jelly and Jelly and Jason were all like in the circle, whatever, like talking. And uh, I was walking by and I, I like tapped Jason's shoulder and he turned around. And he goes, oh, yeah, what's up? And I was like, uh, obviously, like, knew way cooler. He's like, oh, what's up, man? How you doing? But uh, <laughs> I was just like, I was like, damn, I was like, that's cool, man. Like, uh, yeah. you know, to to I, I, I like to I could be wrong, but I like to think that that interaction last year, you know, maybe he's he he remembers me from oh yeah that. he's you yeah, know he's, what i'm saying like totally just yeah man little little things like that but yeah it, it just i haven't had that situation with morgan yet to where I, where we've been in a room where he's not where he's not getting hounded and i'm just like yeah i'm not gonna i don't want to bother this well that's dude. the thing man that's what the kind of things like you know uh working in a vape shop or bartending and just yeah. living your life teaches you how to read a room. You know what yeah, I mean? That's so, absolutely. so important to this career. So you get the job and what is, you know, what is it like to, to what is your relationship? Does he have certain things that he expects from you? What does he like from a drummer? It seems like the band, it looks like there's six guys on stage. It seems like you guys have a great rapport. I think, man, dude, we are just so, we're just so different we're just such a weird group, man. Like we, our whole band is from warp tour just about, uh, well, it, it was, it was until we've grown. Um, like, but everyone, before we added like new members, it was just a bunch of metal dudes on stage. Like K Casey, the guitar player, it was a metal dude. Jack, uh, the other guitar player was in a band called sleeping with sirens. Alex, our bass player was in a band called, uh, conditions and he also played with sleeping with sirens i was in a band called siler um i was in, yeah i was in siler and then our guy that was running our in-ears at the time mark he was in a band called a mirror and like all these just like heavy bands and uh so we just and then our front of house and tour manager he he did like um he did like good charlotte and uh oh, he cool. did this band called uh he did a uh, paramore he did this band called uh 68 like he's done like a he, you know what i'm saying like we're all just like metal dudes and i don't man i don't think i jelly just doesn't have like an an expectation yeah like, you know does that make sense i don't know how to explain it he like it's not that he, he it's not that he doesn't care he cares very deeply it's that he like he just wants everyone to have fun like if obviously we can't go up there and just royally fuck up but like he wants he just wants us to be having fun up there that's the, like, that's the culture of the band is this is yeah, about and, having fun exactly and he wants like i'd i'd say the the biggest thing is that we have to read him sometimes because he'll call audibles like that he calls audibles all the time every show there's an audible like no joke. Every show is an audible. I, I bet the lighting uh, and video guys hate that. <laughs> oh, they despise it. It's, they hate it a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, yeah, he calls calls audibles on a thing. So, like, I think the only thing that he, it's unspoken, but I think he expects us to be on our toes. But it's like unspoken, if that makes sense. Like, sure. um, he's not come to us and be like, "You guys need to be on your toes and be prepared for what I call out." Like, he's not that. 
He's not that kind of guy. He's like, he just he just does he, what he he's wants. He's the he you just, need to loosen up guy. Here, yeah, keep he the tequila coming. But the, the real, yeah, the only reason literally. I ask is is uh, the only reason I ask is because you know some artists have these kind of like idiosyncrasies where it's like you know Cindy Lauper never liked the drummer to play the ride cymbal or there you know other people are like hey you gotta pull the bass drum beater out of the bass just weird things. Uh, his uh, his only I guess his thing is is if you are not sober or if you're drinking at that time you can't refuse a shot. So even if you're taking he, a he, break no not not that you can't not that you can't sorry uh he he doesn't like he if frowns you upon a shot like if yeah if you're now he he won't do it to someone that's sober he he will never he will never make someone that's sober drink and he will never if someone is not drinking like if someone's taking a break he won't pressure anyone into doing it he might mess around with you a little bit but like he'd be like oh blah, 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 but he's not like he won't press it on you but like if i'm like drinking you know, like if I'm like this right now and he walked in with a shot and I was like, nah, man, I'm good. He'd, he'd probably be like, mm. no, nah, you're going to take the shot. And I'd be like, <laughs> you know, like I'm saying, he'd, uh, not, like I wouldn't get fired or anything like that. Well, that's like, he fun. That's, a, that's, that's kind of a fun culture. Like, uh, let me, yeah. okay, let me see. Okay, hold on. I got, a, I got a story that might help clear this up. My, okay. So there was one time, one time, it's the only time this ever happened. I partied a little bit too hard. And I accidentally overslept sound check. And Jelly never goes to sound check ever. So but that day he did. <laughs> that day he did. And um so I overslept, didn't mean to. Um he was on stage, which never happens. And we were I was like, oh no, no, no. And someone had to come wake me up. And someone come got came and got me. And I was like, oh shit. And they were like, yo, Jelly's on stage for soundcheck. We got to, I was like, oh no. So I ran out and I go on stage and Jelly's like, no, you can, he was like, just stand over there. He's like, you go behind the drum tech table. He was like, uh, and he looked at my drum tech, Casey, and he was like, Casey, come play drums. And I was like, and, uh, and Casey was like, I, nah, I can't play drums. And Jelly was like, Casey, get behind the drum set now. Like, get behind the drum set and Casey was like laughing about it thinking that he like, was like yeah making a joke because Casey like can't really play drums but Jelly was dead serious wow. Jelly was like no you like Cody overslept go play drums I don't care if you can't play drums go play drums and Casey my drum tech was just laughing it off and like walked away and handed me the drumsticks well <laughs> <laughs> Jelly has never let that go ever since it's been probably a year now and he's never let it go ever that you he overslept like, no 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 not me he doesn't care that i overslept he doesn't care that i was late he what he's mad he's mad at my drum tech for that he play. didn't play drums when he told him to wow so now every time he sees my drum tech he's like i've been waiting for he's like i've been uh trying to find ways to get you fired and like and like messes with them like that. That's amazing. And like there was uh they all play Xbox and stuff together. They all play Call of Duty. So Jack, our guitar player, and Jelly were playing Call of Duty one time. And Casey got into the chat or whatever, uh, however that works, and uh was playing with them. Well, his screen name didn't have his name. And Jelly goes, Who is this guy that's playing with us? Uh, Jack knew though, but Jelly was like, Who's this fucking guy playing with? He's fucking crushing, like. Go ahead. We need to play with this guy more often. We need to get him on our team. And uh, and Jack goes, I don't, or he goes, uh, where are you from? And said a screen name. I don't know a screen name. He's like, where are you from? And he goes, California. And uh, he's like, oh, well, what do you do for work? Like, what do you do for a living? And uh, Jack starts laughing. And Jelly's like, Jack, why are you laughing? And, and Casey goes, this is your least favorite person in the world. And he goes, what? And... <laughs> He goes, this is your drum tech. And he goes, oh, what the hell? Get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but like being funny, because obviously if he wanted to fire someone, he'd fire someone. But uh, he just, dude, he just like, he never lets them live it down. Like he'll, That's hilarious. he'll write like mean little messages on his, like, and put it on his drum case. He, he, he's uh, keeping the, he's keeping the gag going. So, so, oh, so he, Cody, he your drum tech, he, 
he can he can set up, break down, maintain, tune, but he doesn't play. He doesn't play. Gotcha. He he can keep a beat, but he doesn't play. Did you hire him or was he in the organization already? Uh no, he um he was one of my options. So he like he came from um so Jack, when he was in Sleeping with Sirens, um met Casey, my my drum tech. Casey used to drum tech for a band called Pierce the Veil. And then through that, he did another band called The Amity Affliction. And then from there, he toured with Panic at the Disco for like 10 years. He was okay. a Panic at the Disco's drum tech. And um, and then, you know, obviously Panic disbanded. And um, so he was looking for work. And this was about the time that they were looking to hire a drum tech for me, and uh, which was my first one ever. Um, so I, I didn't have anyone because I, I, I knew of other ones like from the metal world. So sure. like, you know, I, I didn't want to, I didn't know, I just didn't know how it worked. Um, and no one came to me and was like, Hey, who do you want as a drum tech? Basically what happened was, um, I got brought him and another guy. And then I brought someone to the table that I was interested in. And I guess they just went with their, um, they like looked at rates and, um, I, I'm just going to be real. Casey was the only one we could afford. And, uh, it, cause he was willing to come down from his panic at the disco rate. Nice. And, uh, and I, I don't, I don't know the rates. This is just what, you know, this is what I was told. And they were just like, Hey, like this guy's friends with everyone. He's, he's friends with people that are in the camp already. Like we know him. Uh, we've worked with him. Yeah. He's a great drum tech because I didn't know him. I hadn't met him yet. He's a, they were like, he's a great drum tech, great friend, great hang. Like, and and he's in our budget like let's hire him and i was like all right cool and uh ended up being one of the best decisions ever then yeah. like they were they were right like i've i fucking i love that guy dude i, I love, love it i love, love it when it works out like that what's one yeah. of your favorite songs to play in the show um right now dude our medley's a lot of fun um need a favor is probably my favorite jelly song to play yeah. and then um there's a song called The Lost. I really like playing that one too. Hiller. And then um Son of a Sinner. Need a favor, The Lost and Son of a Sinner are probably my favorite. Son awesome. of a Sinner, I get to I get to have a lot of fun with dynamics. And yeah. that's like that's that that's that's like a selfish one. That one's just for me. I, I Plus when the audience is singing every word and it's oh, coming back yeah. at you. It's, it's goosebump really nice. goosebump central, you know? I like, do you know who um do you know who Grady is? He played with Ernest for a little while. Oh, um, Grady Saxon? He, uh, not 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 Grady Saxon. Um, Great Grady uh, Grady Block. Grady Brock. Yeah, Grady. Uh, yes, yeah. Grady Block uh, was the son of um Billy Block, who was a, a staple of our community. He had this Western Beach show. It was like an Americana show. So we lost him years ago. Oh. I, I I'm assuming that would be the. That's who Grady. Yeah. I had no idea. That oh, crazy? that's crazy. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. So, well, so Grady Block used to play with Ernest. Um, okay, all right. Played drums for Ernest, and and bro, and no joke, dude. I'm I'm so sad that he's not playing with her. He's he's because Grady also is a songwriter too. So he, I think he he backed off of touring to to get focus on the to, writing. To like, yeah, because he 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 writes. He's a writer at Big Loud. Um, so he i think he took he backed off from touring with ernest so he could, could like focus on just writing yeah um but dude i have never seen a drummer feel <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> feel an accent music and be a part of a song the way that that man did wow, that okay. dude that dude spoke with his drums. I mean, he when he played drums, he talked. He like, oh, oh my gosh, dude. This He's is great. This is, this is great to hear because I had kind of lost touch a little bit with Grady. And when his dad was going through, you know, his health issues and uh, he said, will you please keep an eye on my sons? And I was like, of course. And they're mm. both doing incredibly crushing. well in the music. They're business. both crushing. That's dude. great to hear, man. I got to I got to yeah. look. Up, I got to look up old Grady. And oh, dude. Well, he he had a major influence on me with how like he's the reason 
that Son of a Sinner is one of my favorite songs to play because the way that I was playing it before was more in tune to the record. And then I saw him play it live with Ernest because, you know, a lot of the, the writers will, you know, the songs that they wrote, they'll play them live. I saw him play Son of a Sinner live with Ernest and I was dumbfounded at how much better he made that song and i dude i was like i just took notes i was just like okay and he one of the things that he did that i had just never thought to do was he started with brushes or like the wood sticks because it was like the the whole first part of the song is like a little bit it's like so it's lower you know where the whole thing is just a build essentially so yeah. he's like just really feeling out like with guitars like with these brushes and like like the dynamic and accent like he like come up and come down to like make parts like make more sense to be bigger and then there comes the drop chorus where everyone drops off and it's it's just you know jelly singing and he or you know well he was Ernest was performing it but so Ernest was singing and he put the sticks he put those down and picked up drumsticks right and made the end of the song huge That's and awesome. i was like dude i would have never ever thought in my lifetime to do that i would have never thought i was playing with drumsticks the whole time but the the change in dynamic and how it like made the song bro i i could talk about his drumming all day bro he's one of my favorite drummers that is so great because he's right here in even... nashville and and, I, yeah. and I, i've known him and i just got pulled apart yeah. i guess covid and the and, whole thing it's been years and he's a great hang he's a he's an amazing amazing hang too i i like i have so much love and respect for that shout guy. out to grady uh, man shout yeah, out to grady big shout out to grady um he, he might be maybe like uh at this point man maybe like 28 or something man he yeah, might even be 30 young. at some point who knows i'm still uh, young that's incredible. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but man. yeah. So, uh, need a favor, son of a sinner, and the lost are my my tops. Taylor, man. Well, hey, I don't want to. I I, I got to be respectful of your time because you're in Dallas, Texas. You got the ACMs hanging over your shoulder. Let's, <laughs> let's no, close. You're fine, man. I'm uh, dude. I'm here. I'm chilling. <laughs> Well, the, I so. got to inter I got to interview Dennis Holt in thirty minutes, and I got to render awesome. the episode and all that stuff. But oh yeah, let, yeah, yeah. Dude. Let's do this, man. Let's do this. Yeah. I want to ask you the uh, your fave five, and uh, sometimes it's the fast five, but it's not usually fast. What's your favorite color, man? Favorite color? Favorite color is purple. All right, you would get along with my student Sarah Cardiel. Everything she has is purple, purple clothes, <laughs> purple drums. It is good. Dude, I like purple. It's crazy. It's crazy because my favorite color is purple, but I don't. The only piece of purple I own two pieces of purple clothing. One is right here. <laughs> one is just the purple on this Diamondbacks jersey. All right, so man. Okay, black gotcha. shirt, purple. Yep. And then the other one is a. Uh, I got this like fishing, this Columbia purple fishing shirt, but like. I, I actually look god awful in purple. I don't look good in purple at all. But like I love the color purple. But yeah, so that's that's gotcha, a man. Nice what about food, man? What's your you, I, am I saying pizza is your favorite food? Yeah, pizza. Well, yeah, we'll put it at that. Pizza and wings are my definitely my top favorite foods. Dude, I love it. Um <laughs> what about um your favorite drink? Favorite drink. Oof. Um I I love a nice crisp cold water uh but if not water i if we're going with soda it's cheer wine and then dr pepper um cheer if we're wine. going and then uh next to that would be definitely some some uh homemade uh mama sweet tea okay tons oh, of sugar yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tons well, also, of she, she makes it to where it's like it's like because i like half and half tea and she made the way that she makes it. It's like not overly sweet, but it's like sweet enough to where I don't feel like I'm about to like have a, you know, a blood something. Yeah, yeah. Not, you yeah. know, like it's like that perfect mix of like it's it's still sweet tea, but it's like it's just sweet enough to where it's not overbearing. It's like yeah. it's like perfect mix. Occasionally, uh, I'll do the uh, the Arnold Palmer. I'll treat myself to that. Very refreshing. But yeah, if I'm gonna have water cold water oh so love satisfying. cold water dude i'm a big 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 fan cold, of cold water, water. And, and if we're going alkohol kentucky bourbon baby and beer kentucky <laughs> bourbon so we're talking like kentucky maker's bourbon. mark 
Yeah, yeah. Honestly, dude, honestly, just any bourbon. I'm not like a bourbon stickler. I just, I love bourbon. I'm, whether not, a it's bur- makers, I'm not a bourbon snob. No, no, no. It's whether not. it's like bur- whether it's freaking makers or it can be Kentucky gentlemen. It can be makers. It can be happy. It can be anything. I don't give a shit. Bourbon's bourbon to me. I mean, it, obviously, some are aged differently and go down a little bit smoother, but like, it all puts you in the same place. Dude, I'm with I'm with you on that. Now this is kind of hard, but maybe uh, this is something that comes on the radio. You're listening to it all the way through. It just keeps rearing its ugly head. The melody, the artist. You don't know what it is, but you just love. This is your favorite song, man. Favorite song. Um, either right now. It's a tough one, man. Maybe I'm gonna have to change my questions. No, 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 no. I. I can't. I'd say it. I'll start it off by saying it changes all the time. If I need to go of all of all time, of all time, probably same old situation or um, sticky sweet by Motley Crue. There you um, go. Of all time, those will those will probably be it. But currently, dude, I I have been of like I can't stop hearing. Um, Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish. I can't. I like it lives in my head daily. Now there's a daily good melody for you. Yeah, it's like an earwig. Yeah, and uh, Whiskey Bent uh, by or uh, um, Wild as You, Whiskey Bent. Um, I'll I'll say that by Cody Johnson are, are probably my my other two. I like Cody Johnson, man. I, I got to work oh, with him. He's a nice fella. That is my favorite country artist of all time, and it it just so happens that that we know each other. <laughs> it's yeah, super he's cool, just, dude. But he's a very he's nice like, guy, like yourself. Very likable. I told him to his face. I was like, "Hey, man, listen, I'm I know we're acquaintances and we know each other and stuff, but I'm just gonna give you this is my one fan moment. I was like, "You're my favorite country artist of all time, and I have a lot of respect for you, and I love what you do, and I love your music." I was like. That's it. That's done. You got it. You heard it. Now we're back to just being, we're just friends now. I'm sure he, I'm <laughs> he sure like, appreciated that. He's, oh yeah. He started dying laughing. He's a, he's a really good dude. I mean, you know, he's a, he's a great dude. Very nice. Very nice guy. What's your favorite movie, brother? Favorite movie? Yeah. Ooh, Rockstar. Oh, Mark Rockstar. Wahlberg. Rocks, Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg and Moana. Moana. Moana has one of my favorite movie soundtracks of all time. Oh, unreal. So does, you know, Frozen has a great, great movie soundtrack as well. Yeah, I yeah. love both of those movies. Those, are, those right. are probably my top two movies. Yeah, I like those Disney Pixar movies where there's a lesson to be learned and, you know, you're being entertained. Yeah. And I'm and a work. huge Disney fan. Heck yo, yeah, they, yo, they got they got a lot of heaters. Um, uh, That bro, that new that new movie, they they just popped out uh, Elemental. Um, Not the second one, but the, I haven't seen the second one yet. But that that Elemental one was crazy i yeah. like i i cried dude that movie was so good are you a sci-fi guy like star wars um planet of the apes no Mm-mm, i couldn't get into it i i i tried so hard to 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 get into star wars and it just like never this never clicked with me never caught i tried yeah. i tried I, I can say that i tried i watched yeah um my dad took me to see it when i was young and i didn't i'm i thought i was just too young to understand it yeah. um but i liked that i liked watching them what i liked about it was watching them fight in the the, the little jets or the whatever they were in yeah yeah uh, i guess it was when obi-wan was like a young was young and he had a, a, oh, his yeah. little like uh his bowl cut his blonde bowl cut i mean you're not you're um, not even you're not even old enough to know the original star wars because that came out in like 76 bro so so then my second one when i was in oak kingdom when we, we were recording and they found out that i had never seen star wars <laughs> or that i had like that i'd only seen that one movie and they were like oh we're gonna watch it from the beginning and so they turned the first one on and i felt <laughs> I ended up falling asleep. Oh my and, god! And they didn't know because I was on the floor, and um, and so the movie was over, and I I woke up, and they're like, "Yes, what'd you think?" And I was like, "Dude, I was like, bro, I fell asleep, man. I was like, this, was, <laughs> I was like, I couldn't, this was, no, I couldn't get into it. Uh, incredible, incredible. I really yeah. like um, what's uh, what's that? Inception, Inception, and Inception. I like movies like that too. Well, that, like those are thinkers, that, man. Those Christopher Nolan movies. Like think, uh, Shutter Island was like pretty sick. Yeah. Um, 
I love, I love, uh, oh, um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Um, sorry. I've, I completely forgot to mention this one. Um, the baseball movie with Dennis Quaid. Uh, oh yeah. The, um, uh, that's, Field that's of dreams, bro. Favorite. Field of dreams. No, 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 not, not field of dreams. It was, uh, based in Texas. Um, yeah, Why am I blanking on that? Yeah, it's all right, dude. We have to. We forgot to thank our Ginkgo Balboa Anyways, today. That's that's my that's my third favorite movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we went to the field uh, field. The of rookie, the rookie, time. the rookie. Oh, okay, the yeah, rookie. yeah, 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 man, the rookie, dude. Thanks. Well, I got I got I got to tell you what, man. That uh, uh, you've done a great job also on your socials because it's pretty much your the same handle of pretty much across everything, whether it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Cody Ash drums, great job, dude. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's I, really it's tough when someone's like, yeah, I'm Cody underscore Ash drums 18. You're like, <laughs> oh, God, you know what I mean? I got um, I didn't know. Obviously, like I so I made all I think I made an Instagram in 2013. Yeah. Uh, and I want to say I made a Twitter in like 2012. Um, and I didn't know, like, I just didn't know what to do. Um, but I was just like, I guess I want everyone to know that I'm a drummer. And I got really lucky that that name was like available, and Great job. I was lucky that the name was available on like TikTok stuff too. So, but yeah, yeah, man. Uh, well, Credits. dude, I I gotta say, we could probably talk three, four hours. We're just scratching Easy. the surface, but I'm, I, I'm hoping that people were entertained. How could he not be entertained by you? Um, and I hope that they check out your drumming. I hope that you guys and Jelly, your success, this meteoric success, just continues to rise, man. I'm so happy for you, Thanks, proud man. of you, and uh, hope to see you out there. Enjoy the ACMs in uh, in Dallas, man. Absolutely, man. It's gonna be a blast. I can't wait. I can't wait. Dude, thanks for Hell joining yeah, us, dude. man. Rich, thank you so much for having me on, dude. I uh, I can't wait for a round two. Yeah, let's do it. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do it in the flesh and, and uh, have a cocktail together, man. Oh, perfect, dude. I'm there. I'm in. You already know. We'll make it happen. What borough are you living in in Nashville? What what neighborhood? Where are you? Where uh, are you? I moved out to Gallatin. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, man. Uh, yeah, I uh, I live out in Gallatin. I I just moved there probably a month ago, and we've been dude, we've been so busy that all my boxes are still not unpacked. Oh like, yeah, bro, yeah, dude. It's, well, uh, this I is a really it's an incredible time for you right now, and so just yeah. enjoy it, and maybe occasionally yeah. journal and write some of this stuff down so you don't forget. Yeah, I need to. I think I was talking. I think was it you that I was talking to about that? But um. Someone, uh, we talked. I talked about journaling. With I mean, I wish I day. had. You know, I wish I had in the early yeah. days. But anyways, big picture. I remember the big pillar moments, man. So I'm really happy for you, man, and uh, appreciate you joining us, man. Dude, thank you for having me, man. This is awesome. Heck yeah! And to all the listeners, hey, we appreciate you guys tuning in. So be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Cody. Absolutely. I'll see you later, brother. Be safe. Thanks, brother. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.